Hey friend, Graham Cochran here from recordingrevolution.com. Cool interview for you today with one of my students, Matt Hylum, a guy who's now making a full-time living in music through royalty-free music. This is an awesome, awesome interview, jam-packed with his whole story of how he went from just being a musician, trying to get signed, that not working, to self-producing his music, to stumbling into royalty-free music as a potential side project, which then turned into a full-time income. In the interview, he breaks down exactly his strategy of how he gets customers, how he's been able to stand out in a crowded field, how he's leveraging YouTube to grow his business, and exactly what gear he's using to do a full-time living in music. You'll be surprised at how cheap this stuff is, or maybe you won't be surprised because, hey, it's the recording revolution. So it's an amazing interview, and before we jump into it, if you have ever thought about making a career in music, there's a lot of ways to do it. This interview is gonna show you one of them, but one that I teach a lot of my students is just turning their home studio into a business through freelance work, starting to record or mix bands and get paid to do it. If you've ever wondered, like, what do you actually have to do to turn that into a business? What are my next few steps? I wanna give you the first four steps. I've got a free guide. It's my four-step cheat sheet to earn $500 to $1,000 a month on the side in your home studio. If you've ever thought about starting a career in music, this is a great tool to have. It's free. Just download it. Just go to audioincome.com. The link's right here and it's in the description. Check it out after the interview and implement it. I, I'm getting amazing results with my students. They're just adding this sort of income stream to what they're already doing. I think you have a lot of fun doing it. But for now, let's jump into the interview with my man, Matt Hylum. Right, hey, friend, Graham here, recordingrevolution.com, and I'm here with Matt Hyland, one of my students, and actually, before one of my students, one of my clients actually mixed the song for Matt a long time ago, um, and I've been meaning to do this interview for a while. I was telling Matt before we went live here that he emailed me about a year, maybe 14 months ago, mm -hmm. um, updating me on his success, updating me on, on the sort of the change in his musical journey and what it's led to. Um, and what we're going to talk about today, I was totally blown away. I was wanted to jump on an interview with him to get his story out, to encourage you, to motivate you, inspire you. And then all of 2018 happened that I never <laughs> did. So Matt, thanks for your patience, man. Thanks for jumping on this call. Um, again, Matt is a musician, home studio owner, and now has moved into a very creative space in royalty-free music and has turned all of this into a full-time living. So um, Matt, first, I want to say thanks for hanging out. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. And uh, again, I want to have a, a helpful conversation to um, the Recording Revolution audience, but I guess give me, when you meet someone on an airplane or you meet somebody and they ask you, what do you do for a living? What do you tell them these days? That, uh, that was actually a hard answer for me to come to for a while. I didn't, I didn't really know what I was doing, uh, but I tell people now that I'm a music producer and that that covers most of the things that I do, aside from YouTube and things like that, but that, that covers enough uh, ground for me to say, it. yeah, I'm a music producer. I produce commercial music. That's awesome. I start saying royalty free. They're like, I don't understand what that is. So I just say, you know, commercials, jingles, elevator music. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. Yeah. That's funny. When you, when you start to talk to people and tell them what you do for a living, when you see their eyes glaze over, you know, okay, don't, don't say that ever again. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so, but you're, you got into music, like, tell me how you, what you were originally trying to do, like your original dream for music, not that it's dead, but like mm -hmm. the version of it in your mind. Yeah. Um, well, I started playing guitar when I was 10 um, and I've wanted to do music professionally since then. Um, and then as I got towards closer to college, I kind of thought better of it and I uh, got a degree in exercise science thinking I was going to go into physical therapy. Um, and then applied to grad school and didn't get in. So I tried to make the best of it in the meantime. So worked at gyms, tried to start a, um, personal training company that kind of just floundered, floundered around, um, until about 2013, where I really wanted to revisit this whole music thing, take a dive into it and try to make a career doing music. Uh, so I started posting covers and I tried to, after a while of posting covers, I tried to put out my first EP. I raised, I tried to do a GoFundMe to raise enough money for me to go fly out to a studio somewhere and get it produced. And that failed. 
because I didn't have a fan base. Um, and so I was like, all right, I guess I got to produce this myself. Uh, so I started binge watching the recording revolution, uh, <laughs> like all of your videos. Uh, and I put out my first EP, uh, which kind of opened the idea of producing for me. I, it was kind of like a hidden talent that I didn't really know I had. I was like making beats on my Mac computer all the time, but didn't really consider it as producing. I just thought I was messing around uh, until I put out this EP and I was like, huh, like I can actually do this. Uh, a few months later, my sister who worked in video production at the time uh, was saying, well, she, she told me uh, I actually, we use like royalty free music all the time in my, our video production. Maybe you should consider doing this as an avenue. And, you know, it wasn't exactly my dream of, you know, being a successful musician, but I was like, hey, you know, like this is, this is one of my talents that I can exploit and, uh, and use to try to make income. That was 2014. Um, and I started just uploading tracks to Audio Jungle, uh, old things that I had. And I kind of glanced over the market and saw what was being sold and tried to mimic it. Um, and it kind of took off from there. Uh, I got a couple sales here and there and I was like, huh, this is like, you know, this could be a substantial like side job uh, that I could do while I'm pursuing my real music is what I called it. Um, so that's kind of how it all got started. And then it just kept growing and growing. So, um, so for people who don't know audio jungle, it's a marketplace where you can sell stock music world. Correct. You... Yeah. Do they sell any there or is it just music? Well, audio jungle is, uh, like a sub branch of a bigger company called Envato and they sell like website templates and video things. And yeah. That's awesome. So your sister, she got you into this. Yeah. She, she, um, she kind of noticed that I was kind of soul searching a bit and she was like, why don't you consider spreading your wings a little bit and just try to do things that you're good at, but not, are not necessarily what you're going for. It's kind of like, you know, exploiting my talents that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, one thing I want to come back to that you said that I thought was really interesting, but before then, when you started uploading music to Audio Jungle, um, when did you get like your first sale? When did you realize somebody actually downloaded one of your tracks and like how much was it? Like how much are you getting off of like one? It was two months after I uploaded my first track. I got one sale in April and it was for like, I mean, my share of it was $9. Uh, and to me, I was like, Oh my gosh, I made money selling music. This is going to be it. Um, I was ecstatic, but, uh, that kind of started the flame of like, what if I, what if I uploaded a hundred of these? Mm. So, yeah. And so, yeah, when you, when you got that first sale, I love how you described it that way, because I think when that happens for people and they make a couple bucks doing something new, they're, depending on the type of personality that they have or the way they're viewing the world or maybe the headspace they're in, they have one or two reactions. One is what you described, which mm -hmm. is, holy crap. Yeah. Why are you doing this? Right. And the amount of money, it's the fact that it worked. Right, right. So your mind goes to, what if I upload a hundred of these? Mm -hmm. what, and, and you get ideas and visions. That's what happened with me when I sold my first course mm -hmm. years ago. I was like, oh my gosh. I was like 45 yeah. What if I had lots of these being right, sold? Right, right. Yep. Um, but people go, all that work, two months and only nine bucks. Right, right. How, how, what would you say to someone who's like, I'm only making nine bucks on this, like in terms of a mindset? I would say focus on the potential mm. and you know, realize that, you know, all of this is, well, I'm, yeah, it's, it's really just the idea of a marathon versus a sprint. You know, like you're in it for the long haul. And so, you know, you might take a while to get to a point where you're actually making income, but knowing that it's, it's part of the long journey and, you know, a year down the road, you can look back and be like, Hey, look, progress. You know, like if you see any, anything on the, on the upside, then that's to your benefit. You know, like, you, you know, you grew from last year. I, I frequently do that every year or so. I look back at my old tracks or I look back at, you know, my checks coming in from the year prior. I was like, I'm making more than I was last year. I'm, my, my songs sound better than they were last year. So that's progress. And that's, that's how you gotta look at it.
I love it. I love that. The marathon, not a sprint. I know people are looking for a quick buck. Um, yeah. And that's not going to work here. No, it doesn't really, it doesn't work in a lot of industries. It definitely doesn't sustain. Um, that's really cool. So you, the other thing you said that I, I think was a genius because it's the same, uh, same applies to YouTubers. Cause I, I'm, when I'm teaching people how to use YouTube or uh, they have questions about YouTube, you said you got on audio jungle and you looked at what was selling. Mm -hmm. you just tried to mimic that in the early, early stages. Yeah. That's really, really smart. Yeah. Well, that, I mean, that's what, um, well, two things with the YouTube thing is that once I got putting songs on audio jungle consistently, the question was, how do I get people to know about my particular tracks? And so I was hoping that the algorithm on audio jungle would just throw me up on the search um, for a while until I realized that again, I could revisit my skill set and exploit that to the best capabilities. Um, I loved making like garbage YouTube videos. Like just like as a kid, just, you know, making this, the funniest things with my friends or whatever. It was just a, a thing that I never thought I could use to, to my, like in a career. Um, so I started uploading videos with my background music in them uh, and then starting a YouTube channel promoting them. And so on YouTube, YouTube is basically like Google. People will search things on YouTube as if it was Google. So people would search background music for videos, uh, background music for vlogs, and my videos would show up and then there'd be a link in the description. I get an affiliate commission from that and, and, and then people are looking to my song and not the 40, 400,000 songs on Audio Jungle. So it was another way to exploit my, uh, my talents and you know, saying like, I can start a YouTube channel promoting my stuff instead of relying on audio jungles algorithm to hopefully push me around. And, uh, yeah. Dude, that's, that's brilliant. I mean, that's what you're saying is, is so it's like so, so important when you're talking about how does business work for people? And it's, and if you're a musician, you're a business cause you're a brand that needs promotion. It's always been that yeah. way. It's just the day you had a label that did it for mm -hmm. you and you could just, put it out. but now you got to do it yourself. But yeah. what you, there's a couple things that are so important. Um, and it sounded like it came naturally to you, but one is, you can't just throw your thing up on the internet, wherever it is and expect it to sell, whatever your sure. thing is, music, mm -hmm. in my case, products or courses, or in your case, yep. real, um, the, the algorithm gods don't just show up and bless you. They do, mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't really work. It's not a strategy at least. Mm -hmm. um, two, you did something about it and you went where people are, YouTube, and you created what people are looking for, or at least you thought about what are people actually typing in and looking for. Because mm -hmm. I was just on a conversation with a guy. Um, he wanted to know for his students, what's the best way for a musician to use YouTube to get found? And I was like, well, think about the common way people do it that actually works. That's you do covers. Right. Yeah. Covers because no one's searching for your song on yep. YouTube. Yep. It, no exactly. Can searching for famous songs. So you have to have at least some videos that are literally what people are looking for right. to be on the people's radar, which I just think is a brilliant way to look at it. Be where people are, be active, and then make what people are looking for so that you get found. Right. Yeah. And, and it's, a, it's a matter of taking it into your own hands instead of, you know, saying that I deserve the success. And so, you know, people should find me or like, it's worth being noticed. Like, no, it's like, you have to earn that. And how are you going to turn heads if you're not, you're not going where people are? Like you said, yeah. It's so simple. I, I, when I, I've talked to some people and they say, well, I don't want to do covers. I'm like, well, you know, A, covers aren't the only thing people are sure. looking for on YouTube. So yeah, you don't have to just do covers. But, but it's also the same thing like in the 90s before YouTube, like what did bands do when they played at bars? Oh, yeah, absolutely. They played yeah. covers. Yeah, yeah exactly. Covers about their music. Yeah. yeah. Want a good time at the bar so man yeah you stop you hit it matt it's we can't be entitled uh, no one deserves you don't deserve success uh, yeah I, for everybody that's talented and but you have to you have to give people what they want and you have to do something to get to get noticed the problem is, no, is a lot of people that's that's one of the things actually that you taught me um i kind of started with the sense of entitlement um i pirated software like mm -hmm. nothing. Um, and I was like, I can't afford this, but I deserve it. Uh, 
And so I started out with pirated software like way back. And then in the process of producing, I ran across your channel and looked up, you know, how to mix. But then also you throw in these side things like don't be entitled. And I was like, huh? Yeah, maybe. Uh, so I went back and rebought all those, all that software. And it's a, it's a whole philosophical shift. It's not just like when you buy the software, things will happen. It's when you change your mindset, then you start approaching everything differently. That's awesome. That's really, really cool. At least you're one of the nice people. When I, I talk about don't pirate software, I get some hate. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, I get called white and privileged a lot on that post specifically. Uh, let's see. Okay. So I want to, I want to keep moving through. Like what was your, your, are you uploading? You're, you're being entrepreneurial. You're, you're making a shift. You're uploading all kinds of royalty free music. You're using YouTube to try to drive traffic. What were maybe some milestones or a milestone where you're like, okay, I know I can make money. I made the nine bucks. When was it like, you're like, this is, this is really something substantial for me. Was there like a moment or a, a certain dollar figure or a certain thing that happened where you got like a really clear vision of, I can do this for a living. When it started turning into like four figures a month and making a thousand bucks, I was like, all right, now this is part-time income and I'm kind of working at this part-time. So let me really dive into this. Um, that was probably at the end of 2015. And so all of 2016 and 17, I really just like, went full on, like, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to get babysitting for the kids while my wife's working. So I can put in at least 30 hours a week, just trying to do what I can and uh, make this, a, make this a career. Um, it took, I think all of 2017, I spent studying a specific genre in royalty free music. It's called corporate, like basic run of the mill music, but it's really hard to make a good one. Like it sounds super simple when you listen to the different songs, but there's something about when you get it right that it just sells like, like fire. fire. Um, and so I spent a full year just like, I'm just going to do corporate. I'm going to study it. Um, and again, it was, it was a, a mentality of what's selling and not like, why aren't people buying my songs? It's like, no, I'm not selling the songs that people want to buy. Um, and so at the end of 2017, I produced a song, a corporate song after producing like 13 other ones. Um, and that song took off. It made my YouTube channel blow up. It made my entire library blow up of like 60 songs at the time. That song ended up becoming the top selling item in the world for 2018. Um, and it currently has like 6 million views on YouTube. Uh, the YouTube channel now has 275,000 subscribers, 3 million views monthly. Uh, it's just, it's going crazy because of that. But again, like I attribute that to a mental shift of knowing what sells, not in a sellout kind of way of almost like a, a stance of humility of like, let me approach this in a way that's going to not be so conceited and, you know, actually garners sales. Dude, that's phenomenal. Um, that's so, gosh, dude, there's, there's so much here. <laughs> One is your mindset of, okay, I'm making part-time income, but I'm working part-time. A lot of people would say when I'm making full-time income, then I'll go full-time. Right. But yeah. Did the other way around. Like, I, to right. Income, I got to go full-time. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's always that point I mean, this applies to more than just music where you got to make that leap. You know, it, it's like you're at the point where it's like, all right, you're at the, the end of the cliff, but you're not really going to know what's on the other side until you jump. And so, so you do that. And if you wait awesome. for that, if you wait for it to come to you, it's not going to happen. No, it definitely won't. Um, and nothing, yeah, nothing comes from inaction, but there's so much fear. I mean, I, I, I tried to start a business years ago and, because the income was really inconsistent. It was all freelance mixing so because it was, it was inconsistent. I got really nervous and moved back to getting a job and then keeping the freelance part mm -hmm. more comfortable for me. Um, yeah. It did it, a recession and God kind of forcing my hand to like go full time again against, mm -hmm. <laughs> against my, mm -hmm. dad. But, but that's, that was a mindset, sh mindset shift. The other one you said that was uh, mind blowing was you spent a year studying a specific style or genre of royalty free music. 
I love what, the way you said that because you saw something that you, you wanted to get good at, that you had potential. Um, it's, there's a need for corporate background mm-hmm. music all the time. But yeah. You weren't good at it yet, or you hadn't cracked the code on it yet. So you, you made a, a, a handful of, or you made like 13 or 14 yeah. of these mm-hmm. and a year of studying it. And eventually one of them clicked. <laughs> right. Exactly. I mean, I was up to the point, you know, like track 11, I could have given up and be like, this is not for me. So like, I'm just going to keep doing it until it clicks. And uh, yeah, I guess it, it, it paid off in the end. This, there's so much there because A, there's the, the determination factor, but um, it, B, it's also because the way things actually work in life from Pareto's <laughs> principle, right? Yep. 20% of your, yep. res, your things are going to generate 80% of the results. Yep. So for you, 20% of your tracks probably make 80% of your money. That's exactly right. Same thing on YouTube. It's 20%, 80% of the views are coming from 20% of the videos. Yeah. It's always lopsided. So until, you know, you can make 10, it's not averaged out. So I think what people right. will do, mm-hmm. make 10 of these songs and they're all going to be good. They all might be good, but Pareto's principle tells us that just through the way things are in the world, one or two of them are actually going to make any difference yeah. in your life, whether right. it's or getting you an audience or making right. you money you can't give up because unless you've made enough, you're not going to get to the good ones. Right. Yeah. And that's how I look at it. I see it like I need to expand my Pareto distribution as widely as possible. So that 20% of my library is actually 40 songs instead of one song. You know, like I want to get to that point. And so, cause I always know that it's going to be the Pareto distribution. So the larger I can expand that 20%, the bigger my income will be. See, that's genius. So I think people realize that like more hard work, that's good, but it, that's not really the full picture. It's because mm-hmm. the more work you do and the longer you're in a game, uh, the higher chance you have of that 20% revealing mm-hmm. itself, the larger that 20% will be. Right. Which, that's where when people get frustrated, like I've put out all this content or, I've, or bands that have written all kinds of songs and mm-hmm. it's still their fourth or fifth album that one song becomes a hit. And it's like, dude, right. all my other songs, yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Eventually it will really mm-hmm. be. Yep. And it's not like I took this path knowing a clear destination from the start. You know, it's, it's always a zigzag approach. And again, if, when you look back and you say, you know, I've walked a total of 10 miles, but I've only made two miles of distance because I've been walking like this, you've still made two miles of distance. And so that's something, yeah. you know? And so like, again, it's just, it's knowing that you keep pushing, whether you're re orienting yourself from time to time to, to know, like you said, you know, I have to take a step back and um, do different things because of the different times, as long as you're always refocusing and moving forward and that, and you, you start to garner the effects in the long run. What would you say to someone who's listening and they're like, okay, well, Matt, like what you're doing is selling out. Like you just figured out what music sells and it's not music you like, but you're just doing it anyway. Like if there's a, someone with that mindset, like how would you respond to that person? Uh, personally, I love what I'm doing. Honestly, I, uh, yeah, I get to make music for a living. So that's, that's great. I'm in a studio that's outside of my house. Um, I have enough income to pay the studio rent. Um, and so on the side, I'm working about maybe 30 hours a week on the commercial music stuff and then another 15 or so on my own original music. Um, and so I'm doing that on the side, trying to make that a thing and grow that. But in the meantime, I'm still doing music. So it, I mean, like, yeah, maybe I'm selling out in, in terms of like, I'm making elevator music, but I'd rather do that than anything else. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't think you're selling out at all, but when some people, it's usually, if someone's watching this and if they're thinking that there's, there's jealousy or insecurity or fear, um, what you've done is you, instead of working some other job that you don't like so that you can make music as a hobby, you've leveraged your skill in a unique way. So mm-hmm. you can make a living from music, which is exactly what you're doing. But even Pareto's distribution will tell tell us that some of the work we do with our talent will pay the majority. Right. Of uh-huh. Right. You know? Exactly. And knowing that, I think it's very freeing um, when you, you're like, well, if I could make a living with my skill and talent, wouldn't I want to do that as long as right. it also allows me to live the life I want to live and do the things I want to do mm-hmm. come the way you thought? I certainly didn't think I'd be making YouTube videos and right. like that yep. to make 
the music, but it's it's a way to to pay the bills. So and it's it's, it's unique. It's different. Yeah, uh, that also. I mean, that speaks to just music in general. Like the the idea of selling out is it always baffles me because the whole point of making music is to reach an audience and to you know relay some truth of the universe in a, a three minute segment and so if you're not getting that across clearly enough then you need to do a better job of getting it clear and so it's it's not a selling out of being like what sells it's what do people resonate with yeah yeah exactly that's that's where i think a lot of musicians are are missing out on an opportunity they have to view themselves as a business in the sense that business isn't a bad thing despite our culture working really Really hard to portray business and business owners as the enemy. Just look at any right. movie, uh-huh. you know, CEO that's the bad guy yeah. in the movie. Uh, that's that's ridiculous. If there's no businesses, then none of you have a job. Because right. well, exactly. Uh huh. You know, business, if done well, oh, actually, business only works and is only good if the business owner and the company is delivering what people want. Right. And so you have to be a servant of people basically to be a successful business. You have to a pay attention to what people want. Mm -hmm. What you want to do. I just want to do this. That's selfish. What do people want? Okay. So I have to Mm -hmm. pay attention and then I have to actually refine that and refine that and refine that continue to give them what they're saying they want as opposed to what I want to give them, which I think is arrogant. You just learned how to listen to the marketplace and give them what you, they want and you're rewarded. Correct. Yep. What would you say you kind of touched on a little bit, like the way your week is broken up. Um, Walk us through like Monday through Friday. What does it look like for you? Um, Monday through Wednesday, I am working about seven, eight hours on just commercial music. Uh, And then I take Thursday and Friday and write a bunch of original music and doing all that production side of things. Um, yeah, it's about a 45-hour work week. That's awesome. And then when you're doing commercial, what's like your output goal? Like how many songs are you trying to put? Usually about two songs a month. And then a corresponding YouTube video and everything else that goes with it. That's awesome. Yeah. Do you find that, you know, you're consistently putting out content? Has there been like an inflection point where like your, your work is about the same every week, but you're hitting a point where you're getting more sales. It, it kind of flows um, up and down. I mean, the, the seasons of the year. So like the end of the year during Christmas time, things peak up uh, April, May are busy season. So I, I see a pretty consistent up and down during those times, but I try to stay consistent throughout just to have content because eventually, like if you stop making music during the slow season, then you have a small, a smaller catalog for November, December. So, yeah, that makes sense. And then what, um, as far as YouTube goes, when you're putting out the videos, Mm -hmm. um, do you simply use that channel on the the morning light music side of things? Do you simply use that channel as lead acquisition, like finding new people and getting them to click over to audio jungle or is there a bunch of interaction or community there? Or is it just not, there there isn't too much of a community. I don't like show my face on there. Um, and so they're, they're not really there for the personality. So, uh, it's just strictly, mostly customers coming to buy a song also, but I think, I think 20% of the audience is actually just there to listen to the music. They have like playlists of my stuff and they'll listen to it while they're doing school or whatever. So that's kind of cool. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Cause in a way you, you, you're giving this music out for free for them to right. stream. Yeah. Right. And then, uh, yeah, that's another thing. If you know, I have happened to ha- uh, come across somebody that actually likes the song like this is it's actually a cool song i was like well you can buy it on itunes it's on spotify and and so like there's i think there's like 13 different streams of income from the royalty free gig that like i'm seeing all these 1099s coming because it's tax season but it's like you know i'm just spreading my wings as far as possible like it's on itunes and spotify you can license it on audio jungle on uh yeah audio jungle or you can see it on youtube and so it's just everywhere that's awesome I mean, that's really smart. Again, you're, you're leveraging your skill and talent to have multiple streams of income. Like you said, about 13 different ones. And, and you're, yeah. consi- you're consistently putting out content. You didn't just like have a good year and say, this is awesome. I'm just going to let these stay in the catalog. Yeah, itself. Actually, I mean, a lot of people do that. 
when they hit a big one on Audio Jungle, they'll be like, wow, I'm done. I made it and coast. Um, but for me, I think the, the main motivator was that I have a family to raise. So I kind of need to make this a lifelong career or else it's not going to work. Yeah, no, that's a huge, a huge part. And you said that once this thing got going, your wife was able to stay home from work. And yeah, yeah, she kids, was, right? yeah, she was a, uh, a nurse for about nine years. Um, and then she, she quit her job back in 2018. Yeah, it's been a year now. That's awesome. Has she been loving it? Yeah, she has. Yeah, we just had our third kid. And so she's busy. It, it was, there was a lot of conversations that happened during that time um, with her about, you know, my plan. And it wasn't, she understood that I was taking a, a humble approach to this and a, a career oriented. It wasn't this like, I want to be famous and I'm, I'm searching for the fame kind of thing. And it was like, I think I can make this into a career. Um, and so she, she was supportive as much as she could be without fully understanding what was going on. Um, but yeah, it, it, it was kind of a interesting period. I, I always look back on that and with, you know, sympathy towards anybody who was like, I don't, I don't think you're going to make it because it, it was, it was totally out of the blue. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. I think people don't understand creative work a lot. Yeah. Um, so when you do something that's out of their realm of possibility, they, they don't know how to process it. Yeah. Um, but it's really entrepreneurism is what it is. You took your skill. That's what it is. Yeah. 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 And people don't equate that with music a lot. And that's, that's where the disconnect was. And they're like, Oh, you just, you're just, you know, seeking something for fame or for, because you're, you like playing guitar. It's like, no, I actually, I want to take this as an entrepreneur endeavor. No, which is awesome. And I, you, there's so many things you did right. And you're doing right when you treat it like a business. You're looking at what your skill set is, what you like to do. You're looking at what the marketplace values. Mm -hmm. Royalty free music was, was one. Then you're studying the marketplace and seeing mm -hmm. what the marketplace is selling. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to get good at that. And then you're, you've treated it like a full-time job. You're putting in the hours. It's not yep. just you feel like uploading something. Like you go into the office and you work. Yeah. And you treat the job knowing that eventually something will stick and it's going to be lopsided and it's always going to be 10 to 20% of your work that makes most of your money. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're doing all the, the things. There's so much that's not in our control in the right. world, especially so we, you can't lie to yourself and say, oh, I can manipulate this situation. But there's so mm -hmm. much that is in our control and you've been doing those things. Right, right. Yeah, and I mean, I feel like that applies to more than just music um, in that like if you just do what's in your control and stop trying to twist the fabric of reality and thinking you deserve things, you're going to find yourself a lot more successful. That's awesome. No, you're absolutely right. What would you say, someone's watching this, you know, as we wrap up, someone's watching this and they're like, um, okay, I, you know, Graham's made a living doing music in a creative way. Great. But Matt's made a living doing music in a creative way. I had maybe hadn't thought of royalty free music as an option. And they're actually interested in doing that specifically. What would you say for them? How would they best get started at the beginning of their journey to create background music, royalty free music, that kind of stuff? Uh, I would say to sign up with one of these sites, you know, Audio Jungle is, a, is probably the biggest one uh, in the world. Uh, so that's a good site to get started on. And then just study a bunch of this music and know what's selling and try to understand the, the key concepts instead of the specific melody, but understand what type of melody sell and, you know, what, what instruments are being used and how, how does the mix sound and things like that. Um, and you don't really need a lot to get started. Like uh, most of my career has been in my spare bedroom on a laptop with a hundred dollars speak uh, headphones and no studio monitors. Um, so yeah, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's a piece of gear. I wouldn't say it's, you know, any type of huge investment, uh, but definitely take an approach of, I'm going to study this as, as a craft and just, just start putting music out and see what sells. Dude, that's awesome. Where can people find you? Where can they check out? I want, I'm going to link to everything. Obviously your, your YouTube channel for morning light music. Mm -hmm. so they can kind of get a sense of what those things sound like. What about yeah. you? Uh, yeah. If you search morning light music on YouTube, it'll show up. Uh, you can click on the background music and check it all out. Um, my personal music's on uh, mattheilam.com or uh, on YouTube. You can search that as well. Um, 
yeah, I, I kind of like to float around the social media area. So I usually put my content on YouTube or Instagram and everything's at Matt Hylum. That's awesome, man. Where do you think things are going for you moving forward? Do you think this is like, this is it for you in terms of I'm, you're going to continue to do this kind of thing? Is there another avenue you want to get into with your music that you're working towards? I would love for this commercial music to kind of take a step back. And so I can kind of, um, you know, kind of automate this even higher out if I could. Um, and then if that's, if my, uh, my own music starts to take off, I've been in and out of conversations with some labels and higher up peoples. And so there's leads and there's, there's a continuing growing of the fan base. So I hope that turns into something where that can be the, the actual main source of income and then transfer that commercial stuff as a side project, but for sure, as a side project, that, that's like something that I've discovered that I, I want to keep in my life forever. Um, being able to produce like that and on my own terms. And it's just huge. That's awesome. Dude, I'm so proud of you, man. I'm pumped Thank you, man. for where you've come um, from. I, I'm, I'm pumped that you, um, that you've seen results that you've like, you've had success that it's had tangible, uh, success in your life, your wife being able to stay home, mm -hmm. you being able to have your video space, you being able to then continue to pursue your personal music, which you're really good at. You're super talented as an artist. Thank you. Um, so the fact that you can continue to do that is awesome. Uh, appreciate you sharing your story. Yeah. Uh, our people and just thanks for, yeah, thanks for being another example of what's possible with the internet um, and an entrepreneurial spirit uh, because you're, you're making probably a path for another person that maybe wouldn't have considered this as a career. Thank you, man. Yeah, for sure. And thank you for, you know, everything you've been putting out for the years. Um, it's definitely, it, you are probably the, the main catalyst into the idea that I can make a living at home. I don't need to fly out some big studio and do it. Um, and so, so yeah, thanks for all that content. It's definitely, it's definitely helped. That's awesome. Well, thanks, Matt. I appreciate you, man. Yeah. Thank you, man.